Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to learn how to make this Fortnite cake. So I've just started with some brown modelling paste. Now as you can see I've not mixed it in properly because I want to give it kind of like a wood effect. And we're just going to create a rough cube shape. Um, and this is going to be used to make the chest that is in the game. So just making a bit of a square shape and cutting it down where it's needed. And that's going to form the base of the trunk. And then we're just going to take the bits that we've chopped off, roll a sausage, and then you're pushing down at the sides. So we want it quite rounded on the top, but the sides need to come down a little bit. And you want it roughly the same size as what we've just created. And we're just going to stick these together. So that's the chest. Next we're just going to make some pebbles using the same paste before. So just roll out a few of these, just pulling off little bits and smoothing it over. And then we're going to make the bandages. So just some white modelling paste rolled out quite thin. And you're just going to cut it to size using the knife to get you started. And then I always put the knife in the middle and then roll. And you're going to roll, I think I did about five of these for the cake. It's a six inch cake that I've used. I'm going to put these to one side to dry. And next we're going to make a white medical box. So again, just trimming down to size, making a rough cube shape. And then you're just going to use your knife to cut, not to cut in half, and then the two pieces that we've got, we're just going to put them together again, trimming off any excess. Try to get all of the white stuff out of the way first, because when you start to colour all the other bits, it can sometimes stain the white. So until you have a rough shape like that. Next we're going to put on uh, some detailing on the treasure chest. Now I did this in white and then I painted it uh, with some, I think it's Fair Car Hill Silver. We'll put a link in the description box below. Just using the back of a brush to create the indentations. And you're going to create the same for the other side, so it's got two. Using the knife just to straighten it up a little bit. And then a square, and we're just going to put a tiny dot in with the brush, and then a bigger oblong shape at the bottom, and that's going to be the kind of like keyhole that's needed for the front of the chest. So you're going to stick this on with a little bit of water, and then just using a scriber tool, I'm just going to go over and just put in some lines on the box to give it more of a wooden effect. And you're going to do this all the way over. Next we're going to make the drinks. Now I've never played Fortnite so I don't fully know what everything is called. But we're just going to start off with some white fondant. And just roll it into a ball and then flatten it with your finger. I did three for this cake. These I'm painted in the same uh, silver that I painted the chest straps in with as well. And so once you've got those, put them to one side and you're going to colour some fondant in a duck egg blue. And then just roll a bit of a cone shape, pressing your fondant down onto the board so that the bottom part is flat. And then once you've got your cone shape, you're just going to push down on it a little bit. So you get sort of like a shape like that. So I'll show you again. Start off with a ball, pinching the two bits between your fingers and rolling it back and forth and you can see that it's quite a cone but the bottom bit is flat and then you're just flattening it down with your fingers. Rolling it around on the table just so that it looks like a bit more cubic but it just needs to be round, rounded as well and put them to one side. 
Next we're going to start on the llama. So I've got some purple paste and we're going to start with the body. So I'm just moulding a rough um, rectangle shape and you don't want it to be too heavy because obviously it's going to be supported by cocktail sticks but obviously you don't want the body to be sliding down. And it is just a rough oblong shape because you don't need um, you don't need it to be too neat because you've got um, the little bits that cover it to make it look more like a pinata. So once you're happy with the size and shape, you're going to put that to one side just to firm up a little bit. And we're going to start on the head. So I've started with a circle, and then I've just started to pinch in the nose area, bringing the chin down, because the bottom jaw comes out a little bit further than the top. So we're just going to pinch that down, just using your fingers to give it a sharper edge, and then you're just going to cut off the sides for the back of the head. Next with the neck, we're going to roll a shape, uh, sort of like a long rectangle shape, and just start to put it together so you can see sort of like the shape that you're going to get at the end rounding off those points and then we're just going to put in the mouth area the mouth is always slightly open for this one so you're just going to pop a knife in and then pull it down working your way around just opening up slightly pinching the top of the nose and then we're going to mark in um, some detailing on the face so these are where the straps are going to go. And so if we mark these in before we put anything on, then what we put on will sit quite nicely in those grooves instead of lying just on top of the um, on top of the fondant. And it also gives us a bit of an idea as to where the eyes and everything should go. So just a little bit off the top there, and a little bit off the back. So if you've got a picture to one side, just keep referring to your picture to make sure that you've got the right kind of size and shape for the head. And always remember to work your way around both sides of the face because obviously the other side is going to be visible as well from the back of the cake. And then another line just at the bottom and this is where the straps are going to sit. Then you've got the eye, so just make an indentation for the eye. It doesn't have to be too deep. And then just a little line on the top of the head. So with the neck, we want to cut at an angle so that when the head sits on, it's, um, it's sat on sh like fairly straight, it sort of has room for it to move down a little bit. So you want to cut it at an angle on the top and then push it together so it's slightly thinner at the top than it is at the bottom, but keeping the back of the neck very straight. So you can see there that it's slanted on one side and it's straight on the other. Put in some nostril holes, just using a small ball tool. Next we're going to move on to the legs. So I've taken some blue and I'm going to roll out a sausage and I'm going to cut this into four and then we're going to insert these on the cocktail sticks. So just flatten it out slightly so it's a little bit more square. Try to make sure it's the same width all the way along so that we don't have different width legs. And then just cut it into four, uh, four pieces roughly about the same size. I dip my cocktail stick in a little bit of water and then I insert it into the fondant. You need to make sure that you're not putting it so far down that when you put the cocktail sticks into the body the cocktail sticks stick out the top. And you want to do this for all four. Once you've got all four legs we're going to roll some black dots again from modelling paste and these are just going to go onto the bottom of the feet. So these are I guess the hooves for the llama. So just always checking that it's the right size, a little bit of water, pushing it on 
and then just flattening the bottom out just with one of these craft knives and you're going to do this for all four legs once we've done that for all four legs we're going to start ass assembling the llama because we want time for it to dry so first poking the legs into the body now if you look at the picture of him the or her whichever one it is the legs come out at an angle so you want to make sure that you're wetting your cocktail stick with some water and then inserting it on an angle and then what I did for extra support is I stuck both of the front legs together so they obviously you've got the support from them being stuck to the body but then the support from them being stuck together as well try to get them both in a similar position and then you're going to do the same for the back legs taking off any paste if needed if one's a little bit longer than the other and then again putting the final one in and sticking the legs together and then we're going to insert this just into a, a polystyrene dummy just pushing it down so you've got something that looks like that and then we're going to put um, a cocktail stick through the neck so first of all just pushing it into the body a little bit just so that we know that's where the head's going to go my cocktail stick came out the bottom so I put it into the neck and then pushed it in and then we're going to stick the head on now I left this to dry for maybe about an hour or so before I started taking uh, sticking anything else on but then you're going to take four colours so we've got the purple we've got a dark purple a light blue and a dark blue so I'll put the links in the description box to the colours that I used and I'm going to cut strips of all of these colours um, and then we're going to mark in some little lines all the way along just to make it look more like a piñata and then we're going to stick them on with some water so I've just got a scalpel and I'm just cutting in the little lines sort of halfway up the strip that I've cut and you're going to do this with all of the colours. Try to make the strips roughly the same length as the body so that when you're putting it on, you're putting it on in strips all the way around. So when you've done all your colours, you should have roughly the same amount as what I've got here. And then I'm just going to use some water to stick these on. So starting off with the light purple and then building up to the dark purple and if you've got a picture then you can see the kind of colours that are used and the way that they are used throughout the llama so two strips of dark purple using the back of the brush just to pick some of the parts up a little bit so it's not uh, all stuck flat then the dark blue so I've done it round the front of the body and the back of the sort of like side of the body and then I've used the paste to go around the other side as well in the same sort of fashion now I coloured the top of the llama all in the dark blue um, it's something that you can't see because it's obviously it's got a saddle on there uh, so it doesn't really matter what colour it is I guess if you've got more of the other colours left over you could use that and then throughout the neck I think the neck is just um, mainly the purple colour So just covering those little bits up one last uh, strip of light blue around the base of the neck when I left this to dry I put the something in front of the head just to make sure that the head dried with it being stuck up I think I pressed it again sort of like a, a tub of Saracena so that's what you should have once you've done the neck Next we're going to do the eyes, so just some small white blobs for the eyes and we're just going to stick these in using a bit of water, so just pushing it down and the same for the other side. And then we're going to paint the eyes on just using a little bit of black. little strip of brown just for the um, the straps on the face so just roll it quite thin 
This is the same brand that I used for the trunk at the very beginning. <coughs> just a little bit of water just to stick that in. Tucking it in under the chin and then wrapping it around the other side as well. So we're going to make the seat, uh, the saddle for the llama. So again, some of the same brown from before. And we're going to cut out a square for this one. So if you look at the mat that I'm using, I'm cutting out a square that's roughly the same size as one of the large cubes. I'll put a link in the box for the mat that I've used. Then I've just mixed some of the brown with the lighter brown. And I'm just going to cut out a slightly smaller sized square. And you're going to stick these together. Because it's modelling chocolate, it should just stick together quite nicely. And then we're going to make an arrow for the uh, side of the saddle. So again, just some of the darker modelling paste. I like to cut the point out first. And then go in for the sides of the arrow and then down for the um, the bottom of the arrow. So it needs to be fairly small. You can paint this on if you like, uh, just using some brown uh, paint, you know, some brown uh, gel colour. Just pop that on. And you're going to make one for the other side as well. So just check that that's the right size. Once you've got your two and a square for the top, we're just going to use again a little bit of water and just stick these on. So just pop it on in place and then the saddle for over the back of the llama and then the other one for the other side. So with a small bit of white, you're just going to roll it into uh, a sausage and flatten it. And this is going to be for the teeth that the llama has. And again, we're just going to pop this into place with a little bit of water. So using the needle tool to pick it up and then just pushing it in place to make it a little bit rounded. So that's what you should have so far. A little black dot for the eye. Again, do the same on the other side. Now for the ears, if you roll out a um, teardrop shape and then use a leafing tool or a Dresden tool just to sort of pull down and make that curl at the top. So teardrop shape and just resting it against your fingers and pulling it down and that's going to make the top bit bend over. And we're just going to stick these on with a little bit of water. And then using that same action, you're just going to pull the bottom of the ear down to make it stick properly. So now we're going to make some trees. So a similar cone shape as before. Um, again, using it, the base of it on, the, um, on your table so that that's flat. And then I've just got some scissors and I'm just chopping in to the fondant and this is going to give sort of like a tree effect. Did three of these for th this cake all in different sizes so I think I did one large, one medium and one small and you're just going to leave this to dry. After you've done this we're going to go back to the white uh, stuff that we had before so the bandages and the medical box. I've rolled out some red and I'm just going to cut some strips and this is going to go on the bandage box. So you want quite a thick strip, almost as wide as the actual bandage box itself. Using a knife to sort of put that line in on the outside and then trimming off any excess. And then for the bandages you're going to do the same thing but you want your strip to be slightly thinner. Try to make them roughly the same size as each other. Just a little bit of water just to stick that on. 
and you're going to do this for all sets of your bandages. If you do it once, your, little, your bandages are dry. It stops them from bending out of shape. So now I've just got a square plunge cutter. And I was going to use the same method for all of the bandages in the box. But actually I just ended up doing this for just the large bandage box. So once you've used your square cutter, I'm just going to cut out some little squares from the square that I've got. And that's going to make the cross that's just going to go on top of the big bandage box. Again, you could paint this on if you wanted. So just sticking that on the top with a little bit of water, using a knife to pick it up so you don't bend it out of shape, and then just pushing that on. Using the um, brush just to neaten up the edges a little bit. And then for the small bandages, I've got some of the Sugar Flare Extra White Powder. So you literally just add a little bit of water and then a little bit of the powder and it creates like a white paint. I find this better than the actual white paint. And then you're just going to paint on your little crosses on your bandages. So once you've left all this to dry, <clears throat> I've got a cake that I've covered in green fondant. Now I've got a tutorial on ganache, I've got a tutorial on how to cover cakes, and that is just a print off that I've got for the front of the cake. So I'm just going to show you how I assemble a cake really. So just sticking uh, things down with water is mainly what I do. So I've put the llama on the front, and then I'm just going to arrange the trees just using a little bit of water at the bottom. Now you can see there that I've got a tree quite close to the back of the llama. That's just to offer the llama some support so when it's travelling, it's got something behind it. It's not left wobbling. It's, I know it's got four cocktail sticks in, but it just helps give it a little bit of support. Again, with the medical box around the front of the leg, it's all to give support to the structure that's there. So just try and to find places for things to go, the rocks, the um, bandages, the medical box, and just putting it all together really. So once you've finished the cake, you should have something that looks like this. I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. If you have, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to see more of my videos, please click the links on the screen now. Thank you.